In this video tutorial, I want to show you a website called Movely.com. And this is a really exciting website, in my opinion. There are some really good options that you get with Movely. And I think of this as being a modern, much easier, and in many ways improved version of Flash. Many years ago, I learned how to use Flash to make animations and fun videos and things like that. Well, Movely can do the same kinds of things, but again, I think it's quite a bit easier. So let's look at what it can do. Here on Movely.com, you'll notice that there is a link for pricing, and you can click there to see the pricing options that you have available. You can do the free 30-day trial, or you can pay. However, if you are a teacher, or I believe a student as well, you can click on Education, and Movely for Education gives you additional options. So if you go down the page a ways, you can see that it says plans and pricing, education free version. It gives you unlimited access to the Movely editor, unlimited access to a whole bunch of videos, illustrations, sounds and music, unlimited downloads, but in standard definition. So it's not gonna be HD quality when you download it. You can publish online to the Movely gallery. However, there is a personal library storage limit of one gigabyte. Now, of course, to free up space, if you run out of space, you could simply download those videos in SD and then delete them out of your account and then create more. But that is somewhat of a limitation, the one gigabyte. So there are some nice options here for teachers. So this is what I use, and I just clicked Get Started to begin using Movely. It wants me to log in, and of course, I could log in with one of these social media accounts. Or I could go down where it says no account yet, and I could create a Movely account that is separate from Google, separate from LinkedIn or Facebook. So give me a minute to sign into my account, and then I'll resume the video. Great. So now I'm signed into my account. I do have to agree to their terms of service. And it asks me right away what the purpose of my account is. And I'm going to say, I'm a student or teacher. Create your first project now. Now, as long as you signed up with an email address that's tied to a school, you should be okay. You'll notice here in the upper right, I didn't do that this time. And so it can tell that my email is just a personal email. So I only have 31 days to use this for free. However, if you sign in with your school account, you should have unlimited access. Okay, so let's get started creating an animation using Movely. When I clicked Get Started, it opened up the Movely editor. And let's take a look at how this works. You're going to probably get some welcome videos that will try to teach you how to use it, but uh, you're watching my tutorial, so you don't really need those. If you ever do need them, notice here in the upper right corner, there is a help button that's got some good information. Okay, so here is the canvas that I have available to me. And you'll notice across the bottom of the screen, I have a timeline. And on that timeline, it says clip one. And also over here to the left, it says clip one. And basically, think of a clip as being a scene in your movie. And most often when I use Movely, I only have one scene and one clip. But if you want to make more complicated, longer videos, you could have several clips, several scenes in your Movely animations. Above the canvas, you'll notice that there are a few tools. One is the text tool. You can click that and then click on the screen to put in a title. So for example, let's say I want to make a welcome video for a Spanish class. So I'm just typing in a message to my students and then I can then click and drag to resize that text and then I can position it the way I want it to be on the screen. Now you'll notice as soon as I added that text, it appeared down here as well on the timeline inside of clip number one. And notice that clip number one is acting kind of like a folder. It collects the things that I add into this scene or this clip. It collects them in this bundle. And notice what happens here. If I click this triangle, it collapses what's inside the clip and hides it. And I can always get it back by clicking again. Okay, so there are a few tools across the top. Notice that there's also a cut tool and an undo and a redo. There's also a copy tool, paste tool, and some other tools as well. Off to the right side, you have some properties. And so if I click here on the stage or the scene, it gives me the opportunity to change the background color if I'd like to. And I can also change the video ratio if I would like, the video size. 
Now, over here on the left, you'll notice that there is a library, and this library is very powerful, very useful. It's got a collection of all sorts of different kinds of graphics, images, and animations and things that you can use. There's also a search, and so you can just search the library. Let's say I want an apple. I do a search, and it's searching that specific sub-library called Infographics, and it found several apples, including a pineapple. So that's a nice search option that I really like. I'm going to delete that, and I want you to see that you can switch between the sub-libraries. So the Movely libraries, you've got Clean Graphics, you've got Clips. Now the Clips library is particularly powerful, and I'll show you that in a little bit more detail in just a minute. Underneath that, we have a doodle marker style of graphics, as if someone was doodling with a marker, hence the name. And um, underneath that, we have infographics, we've got motion graphics, and it's just what it sounds like. If I drag this earth into the scene, click OK, it's going to load that in, and when I play the video, you'll see that it's a motion graphic. Okay, so there's some pretty neat pre-made things that are in the library that you can use as needed. Now, I actually do think that would be a nice graphic to have in a scene about Spanish, an image of the world. So I'm going to resize that down a little bit using the corner, maybe put it over here on the side. Now notice again, down here on the timeline, there are different lengths to the different things that I'm adding. The text at this point stops basically at 5 seconds. The earth rotation continues to 6 seconds. I don't have to stick with that. I can click and drag to resize. And notice what happens if I go beyond the scope of clip 1. Clip 1 extends itself so that it can fit whatever is inside it. Okay, so that's a really nice feature and a nice thing. Now, if you ever do extend one of these and you notice a vertical line appearing, what that means is that I've gone beyond the length of the animation or the clip or whatever it might be. So earth rotation only goes six seconds. Once I went beyond that, it's basically gonna have to loop. It's gonna start over again. So let's look at that. I'll click play. Notice that it's spinning. It's all original and new, but it gets to that line and it's repeating. Fortunately, it, it's a loop and it looks really good. It looks really nice as it repeats and loops. Okay, so at this point, I get to just plan out my animation or my video, however you wanna think of this, and I get to make it the way I want it to be. And so what I would really like is at the beginning of the timeline, at the beginning of this animation, I would like the Earth to actually be off screen a little bit, just off to the side. And I would like this text to be animated in some way. Okay, maybe it appears and then something happens. And then I'd like the earth to kind of spin into the scene. Okay, so let's take a look at how I could do that. Basically what I could do is if I don't want the text to be present at the very beginning of the video, that's okay. I can just go down here, click and drag, and make it so that the beginning of the video starts maybe at half a second. And then if I click right on the text here on the timeline, Bienvenidos a Español, I can now go down below and add an animation to that text. And there's all sorts of animations. Move and transform, pop, scale, fly, all sorts of really good options to have. So I would like it to fade in. So now notice what has appeared here at the left, underneath clip, underneath Bienvenidos a Español, we have fade in and it's represented by this line and the two dots. So I can extend that to make it more gradually fade in, or I can shorten it to make it fade in almost immediately. Well, I think I'll put it somewhere in between, maybe about right there. So now let's test it out. I click play, it fades in, and I actually wanna shorten that just a little bit. And then maybe after that fade in, why not have another animation? That might be kind of fun. And I want it to pop out. And when it talks about in and out, basically the in is the beginning of the animation and the out is the end of the animation. So just be aware, if you choose out, it means that the animation will be added there at the end. If you choose in, it'll be at the beginning. Okay, so I'm gonna back this up. Let's see what we have so far. And notice when you tap this back button, it'll only move back a few milliseconds unless you click maybe three times in a row fast and then it goes all the way back to the beginning. So now I'll click play. There it says Bienvenidos a Español, and now is the pop animation. Okay, so that's pop. 
Now at some point, I would like the Earth rotation to appear on the screen. And so I'm going to select the Earth rotation here on the timeline. I'll add an animation and I'll go to Move and Transform. And I want to choose Horizontal Move Right. But notice that there's Vertical Move, there's Slight Zoom In. So I'm going to choose Move and Transform Horizontal Move Right. And there it is. And I want it to continue to move throughout that clip so far. Okay, so Bienvenidos a Español. And it moves gradually onto the screen. And maybe that's a little too gradually. So I'm going to try it again. Let's see how that looks. Great. That looks a lot better. So I'm pretty happy with that. So what I'd like to do next is add my own voice to this animation and to this project. To do that, all I have to do is go here to the left where it says record audio. I click. It wants access to my microphone. I can allow that. And then click here to start recording. Bienvenidos a Español. I click pause and then I name that recording. Click save. And now you'll see that in just a minute, my recording is going to be added as an asset in this project. And it's actually really in my library. It's in my personal library. So just like there are Movely libraries, as you add your own voice recordings, as you add your own music and sound effects and pictures and videos from your computer, as you add those to Movely projects, it's basically added to your library, your personal library, and you can reuse those assets over and over. So that's really a nice feature. So here's my recording. I'm going to click and drag and drop it on the screen, and that's going to add it here to the timeline. There it is in clip one, and I can click play. Bienvenidos a Español. And that's actually not too bad. I like that. However, you'll notice at the very end of that clip, you can hear my mouse click. So all I have to do to fix that is shorten that recording a little bit on the timeline, maybe a little more. And also, I don't want my voice to come into play so early. So I can just click and drag to separate that out from the beginning of the clip. So I'm going to go back. Bienvenidos a Español. And then here's the pop animation. Nice. I think I want to cut out the beginning of that clip a little bit. Hopefully I did that right. Bienvenidos a Español. All right, very good. I'm happy with that now. So at this point, I could continue to add to this animation. I could add in some graphics that appear and that move across the screen. I could put in all sorts of animation effects, including things like a drag hand. Let me just show you what that looks like because it's kind of fun. So I'm going to go here to the library and I'll just go to clean graphics and I'll pick, let's say, this beach ball. Drag that onto the screen. I'll resize it a little bit. And now I'm going to add to that beach ball, I'm going to add an animation that is a drag hand. So drag hand in. And then I'm also going to add a drag hand out. So now watch what happens as I play this. Bienvenidos a Español. So a hand comes onto the screen and both puts the ball on the screen and takes the ball off the screen because I put a drag hand in and out. So some really fun animations for you to try. And you can make some really good videos, animations, and things like that. Now if I want to, I can add a clip here in the lower left. What a clip does is it basically, it makes it so that you can roll up the old clip and it simplifies the screen. It makes it a lot easier to not uh, get all crazy with all the different elements that you're pulling into your videos or your animations. So now I can do clip two. And right now, by default, they're overlapping clips, but I could just click and drag and move clip two to be later on in the timeline. And this isn't going to make a lot of sense, but here in clip two, I just want to show you one of the best features in Movely, and that is the clips library. So if you go to the clips library, there are some pre-made animations and clips that you can just drag onto the screen and then customize for your own use. So for example, this one, it looks like a coffee cup. If you drag that onto the screen, it appears there, and that's a whole other clip, right? So I had created clip two, but this is the clips library, so it just brought an entire clip onto the screen. So I'm gonna delete the clip number two that I put in. I'll just click this delete button. Uh, but I want you to see this clip from the clips library. So at the end of clip one, it gets to clip two.
and you can see somebody basically just did all of my work for me. All I have to do is go into this clip, this part of the animation, and I'll just drag this playhead so that it's in the right spot. And notice where it says your first line here. I'll just double click there and it highlighted the text and now I can change that text. So instead of your first line here, I'll say something like class rules and then I'll double click here, speak only Spanish. Okay, I click play and it moves on to the third and I can put in my second rule. And so you get the idea. This is basically a template and I can customize it and use it the way I want to use it. So I love that clips library in Movely. All right, there's so much more to Movely that I could show you, but it should help you get started. And uh, let's take a look at my amazing masterpiece here that we have so far. Bienvenidos a Español. I don't know why the beach ball. Okay, so. You know, it's not perfect, but I think that's a really good video. I couldn't have made that without Movely or a similar tool. So it's really a pretty nice tool to use. Here in the upper right, I can click Save. And then if you click here on the arrow next to Save, there's Save Now and Save and Exit. I'm going to Save and Exit. And the reason why is because I want you to see that here in my account, there is the animation that I just made. And I can edit it again if I'd like. I can also archive it, just get it out of my account, but it's archived. I could probably get it back if I needed to, hopefully. But uh, if I want to get back in and edit it and change it, I would click here on edit. Now, if you click on the animation itself, it'll open up to a page where not only can you watch the video, but also you can click edit title to put in a better title. So welcome to Spanish. I could put a description in, click save. I can also copy this project. Maybe I have a similar project in mind. So I copy this one and then I make some adjustments to the copy. I can also download it. This is where I go to download. And that's especially going to be possible if you have the free educator or student account. Underneath that, there's an option to publish to the gallery, which is really nice. If you do this, you're going to be able to share it with other people. Other people will be able to see your creation. And then underneath that, it says archive. Now, if you do publish to the gallery, just know that it's important, as it usually is, that you have followed copyright rules and laws. Now, I'm going to go back to the dashboard just to show you that in addition to all of these great options, Movely also has three basic templates that you can use. One is a school announcement. One is a classroom material, classroom content. And here's one on show and tell. And these templates are easy to use. You just click the edit button and it's a project that's already been made. All you have to do is play it and decide what you want to change. So I want to change the title. I want to change the author. Uh, maybe I want to add some more pictures, some more graphics and things. So it's a template, right? But the entire video is made. All I have to do is go in and make a few adjustments. Now, one thing I alluded to but didn't explicitly show is here in the left, in addition to recording your audio, you can also upload media. So this is where you can go to choose pictures that are on your computer that you want to include in your projects. You can also upload videos. Just navigate your computer, find those videos on your computer, select them and open them up and they'll be added to your personal library. There's the sound I recorded. There's the image I uploaded and any video that I use will also be uploaded in. And so that's how you can get your own graphics and sounds into Movely. All right. Well, I hope that you found this video to be helpful. If you have, please click the like button below and consider connecting with me on my social media accounts like Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. And definitely please do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students and watch for another video from me at least every Monday. If you'd like to support my YouTube channel and in the process get a couple of small perks, you could consider supporting me through my Patreon account. And you'll find links to that in the description below.